Hello and welcome to this Dot Trost Maths video on Key Stage 5 Quadratic Functions and Their Graphs. In this video we're going to be exploring how we can sketch quadratic graphs, we'll reason a bit about what we mean by roots and how we find the minimum value, and we'll look at a modelling example um, as well. There are separate videos to this where we explore in more detail how we find the turning points of quadratic, how we reason about discriminant, and also how we solve quadratic equations. So we cover that mainly in separate videos. But let's look first how we sketch a quadratic graph. Now firstly I should make clear what I mean by a sketch. A sketch is different to a plot. In a plot we put a scale on the axis and we're interested in the exact points. But with a sketch we're only interested in the general shape of it as well as the intercepts of that graph with the x and y axis. So with that in mind, let's sketch this first one of y is equal to x squared plus 4x. Now you may know that quadratic graphs either look like this, a kind of smiley face shape, or a sad face shape, a frowny face shape. And this happens when the x squared term is positive, and this happens when the x squared term is negative. So in this particular case, the x squared term is positive because we've got positive 1 x squared, so we know it's going to be this shape and not that shape. We also need to work out where the x and y intercepts are. So to find the y intercept, where this curve crosses the y-axis, you can see that when I'm on the y-axis, the x value is 0. So if we make x is equal to 0, we get y is equal to 0 squared plus 4 times 0, and we can see that is 0. So we can see it's going to cross the y-axis when x is 0. What about when it crosses the x-axis? Well, when we're on the x-axis, the y-value is 0. So if you make y 0, you get 0 is equal to x squared plus 4x, and now we just need to solve that equation. So we know how to solve quadratics, we just factorise it once we've got 0 on one side, which we do. And then if we've got the product of two things is equal to 0, then either this thing is 0, so x is 0, or x plus 4 is 0, so x is equal to minus 4. Now we already knew that x could be 0, but we get this other solution here of minus 4, so we put the minus 4 on the axis, and then we can sketch the graph. And again, note this is a sketch, so we don't care about any scale on the axis, and you shouldn't put any other numbers on the axis except for your x-intercepts. The x-intercepts, by the way, are also known as roots. So x-intercepts are also known as roots. Let's sketch b. We've got y is equal to x squared minus 4. Again, we ask ourselves, is it this shape or this shape? Well, the x squared term is positive, so it's going to be smiley face shape. And then to find where it intercepts the y-axis, we make x 0. So if x was 0, we get 0 squared minus 4, which is minus 4, so we'll intercept here. And basically, the number on its own will tell you what the y-intercept is for quadratic graphs. And what about the x-intercepts? Well, we need to make y 0. So we make y 0, we get x squared minus 4 equals 0. Now that's the difference of two squares, so we can factorise it like this. And then that gives us solutions of x is minus 2 and x is 2. So if we put that on there, 2 minus 2, and then we can see it's going to look like this. What about c? We've got y is x squared minus x minus 6. Now, as I said, that number at the end will tell us the y-intercept, which is minus 6. And to get the x-intercepts, we make y 0. So if we have x squared minus x minus 6 is 0, we factorise it. So it's x minus 3, x plus 2 is 0. So either x is 3 or x is minus 2. And that gives us our two x-intercepts, which are like this. Now be careful when you sketch this because I don't want to draw it such that the minimum point is at the minus 6. We know that quadratic graphs are symmetrical, so the minimum point of our quadratic will be halfway between minus 2 and 3, which is going to be above 0. So the minimum point is going to be slightly after the 0, and we just have to make sure that that minimum point is after the y-axis. What about d? y is 15 minus 2x minus x squared. Now again, we can instantly get the y-intercepts, because that's the constant term here, the 15. Now this one's a bit harder to factorise, but if we just make y 0 again to find the x-intercepts, there's nothing stopping me just timesing both sides of this equation by minus 1 to make the x-squared term positive. So if I do that, 
I get x squared plus 2x, and I'll get minus 15. Let's factorise that in the normal way. That's x plus 5, x minus 3. And therefore, the two roots will be x is minus 5 and x is 3. So if we put that on there, we get the 3 here, and we get the minus 5 over here. And we can see, because it's a negative number in front of the x squared, we're going to get this other shape, the frowny face shape. So it's going to be a kind of upside down quadratic like this. And indeed, that's a shape that we get. And what about e? Just one more like that. y equals 7x minus 3 minus 2x squared. Again, the constant term, that minus 3, is going to be the y-intercept, so it's going to be here. And then again, if we make y 0, 0 is 7x minus 3 minus 2x squared, so we can find the x-intercepts. We multiply both sides of the equation by minus 1, so that we have a positive x squared term. So that'll be minus 7x, and it'll be plus 3. And then if we factorise that, we'll have 2x here x here, and because 3 is prime, it has to be 3 and 1, and both of them have to be negative in order to get this negative term here. So we've got minus 1 and minus 3, and the minus 3 is going to be here, the minus 1 is going to be here. So if 2x minus 1 is 0, then x is half, and if x minus 3 is 0, then x is 3. Let's put those on there. So we've got 3, and we've got half, and sorry, this is going to be a bit squished, but we're going to get a graph like this. It's going to be frowny face shape again, because we have a negative x squared term. Now what about question two? If f of x is equal to x squared plus 6x, so this is a quadratic function, and it's explicitly a function here because we're using function notation, find f of 3. So that's effectively finding the y value of this graph if y was equal to x squared plus 6x when x is minus 3. So we know from functions we just sub in the minus 3, minus 3 squared plus 6 times minus 3, and that is equal to 9 minus 18, which is minus 9. Find the roots of f of x. Now we know the roots of a graph in general is when the y value is equal to 0. Now the y value is effectively the output of this function. So the roots are when f of x are equal to 0. So it's the values of x such that f of x is 0. So make x squared plus 6x 0. Factorise that. And we can see the two roots are going to be x is 0 and x is minus 6. And then finally, find the minimum value of f of x. Now, if you imagine just y is equal to f of x, because usually we make the output of the function the y value, we want to find the minimum value of y. Now, in another video, we explore how we find the minimum value of a quadratic, we just complete the square. So, if we complete the square with this quadratic, we halve the number in front of the x, so it's x plus 3 squared. And remember, we have to square that number and subtract it. And the reason we have to do that is because if we expanded that out, this would give us x squared plus 6x plus 9. But there is no plus 9 there, so we have to minus 9 to cancel that plus 9 out. And then do you remember that the minimum point, if we were to actually sketch this, would be we negate that value, so minus 3, and the y value would be minus 9. But it's interesting in the minimum value of y here, so the actual answer is minus 9. And a value of minus 3 would give you that minimum value of minus 9. And now we've got this modelling example. A stone is thrown from the top of a cliff. The height in metres of the stone above the ground, well, the bottom of the cliff, is 60 plus 15t minus 5t squared. What is the initial height of the stone? Well, whenever we use the word initial, that means when time is equal to zero. So we just make time zero. So we do h of zero when the time is zero. That's going to be 60 plus zero minus zero, and that's just going to be 60. And that basically tells us the height of the cliff, because if the stone is initially 60 metres above the bottom of the cliff, then the cliff must be 60 metres high. Now, at what time does the stone hit the ground? So the stone hits the ground when the height above the ground is zero. So that's when h of t is zero. So we just solve this equation. And in fact, I'm just going to use the quadratic solver on my calculator for this to save time. So the x squared term here, in this case, the t squared term is minus 5. The t term, the x term, is 15. And our constant is 60. And we get times of... 5.27 seconds, and the other value is negative. Now, we know that the time has to be positive. We can't have negative time, and so that is the answer. And then finally, C, determine the maximum height of the stone.
Now, believe it or not, when you use that quadratic solver on a calculator like the class with, you can actually get the maximum value of that quadratic. So it's telling me that it occurs when t is 3 over 2 and that actual maximum is 71.25. So I know that the maximum height is 71.25. So you just have to press the down key for that. But I'm going to do that by completing the squares. Now, I explore this in a separate video, but I'm going to do it briefly again. I reorder the terms first of this quadratic, so the t squared term is first, then the t term is second. Now, do you remember we factorise any number but in front of the t squared term and we take that out of the first two terms so if we have minus 5 then that's going to be t squared and minus 5 times what is 15t we have minus 3t so we factorized out the number in front of the t squared out of those first two terms we can just leave the 6t as it is on the end and then we complete the square inside this quadratic so i'm going to copy this out first so that's going to be t and then half of minus 3 is minus 3 over 2 squared we square that and subtract it so minus 9 over 4 and then we expand out the outer brackets we have minus 5 t minus 3 over 2 squared we times the minus 5 by the minus 9 over 4 which becomes plus 45 over 4 and we've got the plus 60 there and then if we just simplify that we have 60 plus 45 over 4 and that is plus 71.25 so that means the maximum height of the stone occurs when the time is 3 over 2, because remember we negate that to get the x value, in this case a t value, and that is the actual maximum value of this quadratic. So the maximum height is equal to 71.25 metres, and that occurs when the time is 1.5 seconds. Now I just want to do these last questions here only because I've seen it occur in the exam and many students don't know how to do these. I've got the graph this time and I actually want to find the equation of that quadratic given that graph. Now if we look at this first one, we can see we have roots of minus 4 and 4 and the y-intercept is 24. Now if we forget that y-intercept for the second, could we suggest a equation for this given those two roots? Well I might suggest that y is equal to x plus 4 and x minus 4 and the reason I've done that is kind of thinking backwards because if x plus 4 was one of these brackets then I would know that an x-intercept would be minus 4 because if x plus 4 is 0 the next would be minus 4 that gives you this root and similarly if x minus 4 was 0 that gives you a root of x is 4 as we have here. Now the problem is, is that this might not give us the correct y-intercept. Now to get the y-intercept for this graph, if we substitute it in 0, because that's when we're on the y-axis, we have 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 4, that would give you minus 16. Now there's two problems with this. One, it's not the correct scale, but also it's on the wrong side of the x-axis. And that's because, look, this is actually a negative quadratic, not a positive quadratic. If we expand this out, it'd give us positive x squared, which would be the wrong shape, that would be smiley face shape, but we want frowny face shape, so we want to put a minus on the front. And that improves our y-intercept, the y-intercept will now be positive 16 because it flips it upside down, but we actually want a y-intercept of 24. So how can we scale this somehow to get a y-intercept of 24 rather than 16? Well 24 is 1.5 times 16, so if instead we actually use y is minus 1.5 x plus 4 x minus 4, then this fixes it. Because times can by minus 1.5 stretches it, but it won't affect these roots. So the roots will still be minus 4 and 4. But if we subbed in 0 into this, we'd have 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 4, that's minus 16 times minus 1.5 is indeed 24. So that does indeed work. And if we do a similar thing here, we've got roots of minus 2 and 1, and a y-intercept of minus 1 here. Now we first know that this is a positive quadratic, so it's going to be, so we don't need to negate it. And we might start with x plus 2 and x minus 1 to get us the roots of minus 2 and 1, as we have in this graph. But again, if we find the y-intercept, if we were to substitute 0 into this equation to get the y-intercept, we have 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1, that would be minus 2. But we only want minus 1, so therefore all we need to do is just half the y value. So we just do y equals half of x plus 2x minus 1 instead, and that will fix it.